In March of uh, 2013, we had a scheduled visit from a team representing the Higher Learning Commission. Uh, you will hear that reference throughout today as HLC. In conjunction with that uh, scheduled meeting, we also had <coughs> what's called a focus visit on finances. We had some issues and concerns going into the, the comprehensive visit, mostly the, related to our, a deficit in our general fund and our audits, the timeliness of our audits, and the, uh, some findings, and some, uh, findings within our audits related to our, to our financial management policies and procedures. The team was comprised of representatives from different institutions throughout what's called the North Central Association. <laughs> there were five members. One was from the University of Wisconsin at La Crosse. One was from the University of Minnesota at Morris. One was from Dickinson State University. One was from Diné College down in Navajo Land. And there was also a CPA who was uh, part of that committee who would there to look at our, uh, our finances as part of the focus visit. About six weeks after that time, the team produced the report. And at that point, we were first notified that Sinti Leska was given a recommendation for a probation. The wording <coughs> reads that you are accredited, but you've been placed on probation. Now, probation can conjure up a lot of different uh, images. In this context, we want to say at the outset, <coughs> probation does not affect your status as a student. <coughs> the credits that you earn apply to your degree, and they are transferable to other institutions. You will hold up here that statement repeated throughout the day. At the third level, and this is where we will are today, and uh, what we're talking about, uh, you go to the HLC, Higher Learning Commission Board of Trustees. That meeting was held on October 31st, Halloween, uh, at which point, once again, a determination was made that SGU, Savannah University, was an accredited institution with a status of probation. We have until May of 2015 to address what they call our deficiencies. We have uh, we have to meet some assumed practices. <clears throat> I'll keep this real quick still. There are five criteria, and I got, hope I get my plurals and my singulars right. There are five criteria of accreditation. We did not meet all of the criteria. We met three of the criteria, and we had we did not comply with some of the assumed practices within two of the criteria. Basically, it's a report card, and you're familiar with that. So we had good or had at least passing grades in three of the areas, three of the criteria. But overall, you have to meet. Total points, I don't know how many there are exactly, but <coughs> we were cited for ha uh, not being in compliance act with, I believe, nine assumed practices. So we, that, that's what we're faced with today, is going to back and addressing those nine <coughs> assumed practices. If you look at our <coughs> website today, as of this morning, and if you uh, 
go to a clickable icon that says <coughs> Higher Learning Commission. Then there is <coughs> a, there is a status report there that says that SGU is accredited and on a status of probation. <coughs> that is our uh, statement of public disclosure. This is an uh, oral presentation to you today to confirm what you may have heard, or this may be the first time of, of you hearing this. But there was a process. So it was an eight-month process. We weren't necessarily trying to keep anything from you, but it had to run its course. And this is where we stand today. I'd like to conclude by making <coughs> these observations. And then I'll turn it over to uh, Itasha, President of Mind Order. Success, or what we call success in the country, is more often than not viewed differently than what's defined or measured as success in, in other areas of this country and other societies. That's true for tribal colleges. Tribal colleges, I believe, have been very successful. But we are not the same as other institutions throughout this country. And those, <clears throat> those institutions are part of North Central, the Higher Learning Commission, and they're part of other, other accreditation associations. In the case of SGU, it's interesting to know that initially in 1983 when we gained accreditation, we were acknowledged and even applauded for what we had done with very little resources, with very limited resources. In the 1990s, that changed. In the 1990s, we were told, you have very limited resources, you can't expand, you could only go so far. And now, in the 2000s, we're told your limited resources put you on probation. And it, <clears throat> where we've talked about this, I don't know what exactly is happening <clears throat> in the review of tribal colleges, but it's happening to more <clears throat> practically all the tribal colleges in one way, shape, or another. They're put on monetary status, they put on probation, and in worst case scenario, <coughs> their, um, their, their accreditation is rescinded. And we see it happening. We here at Sydney Western University are trying to address it as best we can. And by 2000, we have roughly a year and a half, and we will keep you apprised of all of the progress we're making as we move to regain uh, a regular, I guess that's what they call it, a regular status of accreditation, but to remove that current condition or stipulation of probation. I thank you. And I want to pick up on what Mike was talking about as to the type of institutions that we are as tribal colleges and universities and the difficulty that we have in dealing with higher education and their assessment, that report card that Mike talked about. No other institution of higher learning has as a mandate to come up and replace the form of tribal government that we have and give that power back to the communities, the families, and the Teoshpai. No other institution has this. And yet, it's our role and responsibility to address these to come up with a new form of government and base it on the treaty, not the Indian Reorganizational Act on which it now stands. These are tough, tough mandates. 
in the 80s. We have a very difficult time explaining these and getting the accreditation people to understand these because they do not have it in their system. Yale, Harvard are not told to create a new system to replace the United States Congress. To come up with a new system that replaces the educational system that we have in this country. And yet that's our calling. That's the role that we have here. And when they red flagged us, they didn't red flag our academic delivery. They said that we were doing superbly well with the limited resources that we have with our academic delivery. And therefore, our accreditation remains intact. The problem that they had with us was they wanted to see our board more active. And they wanted proof. They wanted our board to be involved with financial management. But when you have two girls who are near 100 years old, and you've got medicine men, we have a whole different type of board of regents. We're more concerned with the fact that we have elders on our board than we are having people who have that understanding as if you were sitting on the Board of Regents for the University of South Dakota. Our elders are always dear to our heart, always will be, and always will be the foundation of who we are at St. Denis University here. The other thing that they red flagged was our increasing student tuition debt. And frankly, he told us to drop those students who may not have the ability to pay. And I told him that is not our thinking. That's not what I thought about. We will keep those students. To me, it's more important to see those students graduate and become working family members or family heads than to be told that you cannot go to school here anymore. And I had some tough problems with some of these evaluators because in, from where they come from, you cannot go to school if you have that debt. A lot of our students don't always graduate in four years. They might go eight, 10, 12, 20 years until they exhaust their Cal eligibility. So the institution cannot always collect tuition for them. But that general fund increasing does not affect our academic delivery. So why are you penalizing us for it? Well, that's, that's their way. Those are the questions that they have in their assessment on their report card because that's who they represent. And that's why we have a difficult time fitting into that higher education system. And they also red flagged us for not having a comprehensive long-range strategic plan. It is difficult to have a long-range strategic plan when you do not know where your next dollars are really coming from. But we will address these because we have two years to come back and to explain again, but this time more realistically, they said, 
And I guess that's where these documents come in. Because we're going to continue to push for who we are. Not with some not who somebody else wants us to be. And we need to develop our own accreditation model with our own spirituality and our own tribal law and our own tribal values. And seek reciprocity like a memorandum of understanding with the higher learning commission. So the institution is being called upon to address a lot of areas. And how we pull together and address these will describe our future success and achievement in strengthening Ola Kota and Sicharu. And my hope is that the naysayers don't jump all over us and badmouth us. Too often, that's what really poisons the well. But we need to remain positive. We need to continue with prayer. We need to call upon our ever-expanding family in the spirit world and continue to ask them for direction, guidance, and strength. And those of us who are still on this earth, we know what we have to do to continue to pull together and to strengthen who we are as individuals, our family, our Kyoshpaya, our Sichano Oyate, and our institution. Have a happy holiday. Love you all. Thank you. Dokshake. Wow.